Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Welcome back, everyone. We are here today with our Training Thursday episode. Today, though, we're going to take a little sidestep from our interviews, a little sidestep from some of our exercise-related podcasts, even our toxicity-based podcasts, and really go into, again, not a condemnation that I was talking about, about the one meal a day diet two day, uh, yesterday, if you tuned into that, but really about social media and all of the different posts around health that can be completely detrimental to you trying to figure out what is right for your body. Because I don't think that a lot of us are going to social media necessarily to find out the best health tips out there. However, we're surrounded by them, right? We follow accounts where people are sharing health-based advice. And here's the interesting thing. I really believe that 99 out of 100 fitness and health people online are 100% trying to help people at large. They're private clients, but then also teach at large. The problem is, is that, and again, I was there myself, so it's not like I'm, I'm, again, I'm not condemning anyone, but they're teaching from the outside of the onion and they're applying it like it applies to everyone. And I'm going to give you some examples here today. So one of the things that you learn in this amazing industry that I'm completely grateful to be a part of, and myself still on the journey, I've been doing this 25 years. I'm, li- I'm reading every single day. I'm researching every single day. There is no end. There is no end to this industry because there's so much information, right? So that's also part of it too. You don't want to talk out of turn. If you're not an, like, for example, I saw uh, someone that I do respect and they were giving, and and they're great in the, uh, let's talk about self-improvement. They're great in the self-improvement space. The problem is like, they're all of a sudden starting to talk about the vitamins you need for self-improvement, which are which is completely absurd to just start to throw that in there, saying like, oh, everybody needs this vitamin at this dosage. There, that's actually not true in any way, shape, or form. Everybody does need their, let's say, B vitamins, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they need 5,000 or 10,000 micrograms of B12, right? Or 25,000 I use of vitamin A, right? That's incorrect, right? We don't want to be teaching those things. So what we want to do is say, maybe, and this is a lot of times what I do, interview someone with a greater expertise in that area and bring them to your community, right? So I think there's a lot of the practitioners that also listen to this podcast. Let's not talk out of turn. Let's bring other experts in. And then let's also ourselves become an expert in that area if it's something that we love, but let's not teach all for one principles if they are outlandish. And I'm going to share with some of those, some of those right now. So again, like I said, I have amazing friends, I have amazing colleagues. This is not anyone individually at all. And I'm not putting myself on a pedestal. A lot of times people create these videos and say, look at me, I know so much, all these are, no, that's not it at all. What I'm trying to share are things that are actually detrimental to people's health that just continue to be perpetuated in this industry. And sometimes a lot of the uh, gurus and experts don't even know that that's what they're doing because if they did, they certainly wouldn't be teaching it. I, again, I believe that 99 out of 100 are doing uh, what they feel is beneficial for the world. And, and of course, I love that, right? It shouldn't just be one person speaking. There's just no doubt about that. I even teach that inside of the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute with all the health coaches that we certify and teach. Uh, I tell people, listen, this isn't going to be the last educational program you go to. My book is not going to be the last book you read. My podcast shouldn't be the only podcast that you listen to, right? So I I love being able to bring in other voices. So all of that to say, let's go over some of the worst myths that are being taught out there right now. The first one is this, and I'm going to be doing a full show on it right now. I'll be doing a full show on it. There are people out there in social media who are like a dog with a bone on a specific topic. They just can't let it go. And they're 
Cognitive dissonance is so strong that even if you bring them other information, they won't change their mind because they're so locked into this, right? We see this all the time in the media. We see this all the time in the political sphere. We see this all the time with whatever it might be. It's like, well, I can't change my mind now because I'm already so locked in. No, no, no. To change your mind is to be human. To change your mind is actually to follow the science, right? Science is ever changing. Science is always being questioned. So we have to be careful with what we say, oh, we're so dogmatic that this is absolutely true. So for example, this first one, I am absolutely and always have been against polyunsaturated fatty acids, right? 100%. But omega-6s and polyunsaturated fats are not bad for the human body. They are not at all. If you didn't have omega-6s, you'd have serious health issues and you'd have serious health, uh, healthy membrane-based issues. And I go over that on, let's see which show I did it on. Uh, it was on Tuesday's show, 2104. And this is really important because there's a lot of negativity around omega-3s right now. And what a lot of people have really failed to look into is there's almost more research on omega-3s than any other nutritional supplement. I want to repeat that. There is more research on omega-3s than almost any other nutritional supplement, and that would go pharmaceuticals as well. There's actually so much research on omega-3s, and it's so well documented for so many health conditions and diseases that the conventional medicine uh, pharmacologists actually created an omega-3 that they could patent and then sell through insurance companies. And they've only done that for a handful of vitamins, minerals, omegas, etc. So you have to understand is everybody knows that it helps tremendously for health conditions. But again, when you're looking at the outside of the onion, you think that since it's a polyunsaturated fat, that it's automatically bad. No. Oxidized polyunsaturated fats are bad. Non-oxidized are actually needed by the human body. Okay. Well, and I'm going to be doing a full show on this as well. So that's number one. Number two, there are people telling you and dermatologists all over the world are saying to be afraid of the sun. You have to understand that we humans wouldn't be here without the sun. And that includes letting the sun touch our skin. People are worried about skin cancer. Did you know that people who get skin cancer have some of the lowest levels of vitamin D? And what is the best source of vitamin D in the world? Sunlight, right? So I'm not saying you can't supplement. I have to supplement from October through essentially May, even a little bit into June in Boston and Maine. And that's because the sun isn't strong enough to give my body and skin a tan. Very important to look at that, right? I have Mediterranean roots. My body needs a little bit more sunlight in order to get enough vitamin D and enough of a tan. The darker your skin, darker that pigmentation, the more hours in the sun you need. The lighter your skin, well, that's actually a benefit for people living in the north because the less sun you need in order to make adequate vitamin D. Again, this is the science behind it. Now, the downside is, well, there'll be aging. There's no doubt about it. There'll be some aging of your face and your skin if you get some sun. Now, I'm not talking about a sunburn. In no way, shape, or form am I recommending that you allow your skin to get red, that it get a burn. I don't recommend that. So the photo aging caused by the sun is one of those side effects. Now, you can do certain things, take enough vitamins, minerals, and omega-3s in order to reduce that damage, taking enough antioxidants, uh, one being vitamin C, but also zinc, very powerful on that, um, advanced collagen support, items like that are great. Here's the issue. I want people to be living long enough to actually worry in their 60s and 70s about what their skin looks like, right? So I don't know that we're going to get there with the uh, incidence of cancer and everything else, cardiovascular disease and blood pressure, all these things matter with not getting enough vitamin D and sunlight. So again, I'll be doing full shows on these if I haven't already. For the ones I've already done shows on, head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 2106. StephenCabral.com 2106. StephenCabral.com forward slash, sorry, forward slash 2106. And I will link up all the previous ones as well because I've done many, many like this next one on lectins, right? 
So I've done a show on lectins. I'm going to link that up. I've done a show on oxalates. I've done a show on salicylates. I've done a show on histamines. A lot of people and a lot of experts say you should never eat foods high in lectins. You should never eat foods high in oxalates. You should never eat foods high in salicylates. You should never eat foods high in histamines. Well, you would not have very many foods to choose from if you followed all of those different diets. And who's to say histamines is worse than oxalates? Or who's to say lectins is worse than histamines? When does it matter? It only matters if the person actually has a sensitivity to lectins, oxalates, salicylates, histamines, or any other food-based compound, right? These aren't the only ones. Sulfur. What about sulfur-based foods? So are we really going to be on a low lectin, low oxalate, low salicylate, low sulfur, low uh, histamine? We're going to be on these lows? I mean, there'll be no foods left to eat. So what matters is only applying these very stringent, specific diets to those that actually would benefit and that would get, because if you're not going to benefit from it, why deprive yourself of healthy foods with these things? So plant toxins, anybody that you hear say plant toxins, you know that they're on the outside of the onion. Like you would never use the word plant toxin unless you just had that outside of the onion based knowledge. And why I say outside of the onion is because every, every layer you peel back on an onion, you get deeper, right? In terms of knowledge, you get deeper into the actual truth, right? And the truth is bioindividuality. So the truth is that some people are sensitive to any one of those things. Like for example, myself, I'm more sensitive to histamines. I'm more sensitive to nightshades. Should everybody eliminate tomatoes and potatoes from their diet? No. But for me, I can't overdo potatoes, something like eggplant or tomatoes, potatoes, eggplant, those types of things uh, on a daily basis. Can I have them every once in a while? Yes, because my body is disease-free. It's balanced. But I certainly have a genetic susceptibility to something like a nightshade. However, only a small percentage of people do. So most people can eat tomatoes and get all the benefits of lycopene and all the other great antioxidants and vitamins and minerals by eating tomatoes, right? So we don't say just because I can't eat tomatoes doesn't mean you shouldn't, right? And again, I do eat some tomatoes like once a week. That's it. So I just want to share that with you is that you only do it if you have to. And I can now eat histamine-based foods, can't overdo it until the rain barrel overflows because I fixed my gut, right? So once I cleared up the H. pylori, candida, and SIBO, and I sealed my gut, now I'm able to then eat these things as well. And most people will be able to. All right, number four is this. The fourth myth that people keep perpetuating is that carbs and fruit are harmful. Carbs and fruit are harmful to who? What are we saying? Well, typically it's said they are harmful to people that are trying to lose weight. Okay, well, they're not harmful to people trying to lose weight, that's for sure, but they are harmful to people that may have higher levels of insulin insensitivity based on, though, improper eating in the past and improper sedentary lifestyle and, yes, other toxicity-based factors. I have a podcast on this. I'm going to link it up, but it's basically on why carbs are not the enemy and why carbs probably don't cause type 2 diabetes, right? And so I have a whole show really kind of opening the mind about what else may be causing this. Now, will processed carbs exacerbate it? 100%, 100%. But you should see the science on what happens when people are eating more fruit. Does it actually exacerbate the condition? No. So now we have all these people who are actually becoming carbohydrate intolerant because they're removing them from their diet. And now there are massive fluctuations when they begin to add them in. So we have to be really careful. We also have to understand is that if you're in the sympathetic nervous system, the fight or flight, right? Or you're in more of an anaerobic based state, you don't get to choose that you're only going to burn fat. Like it's one of the most, again, this would be another myth, right? But I'm just going to add it to this one. You don't get to choose. Your body needs a fast fuel source and oxidizing adipose tissue, oxidizing body fat, and fatty acids is a slower process, which is why we do it more when we're more relaxed, and especially overnight, if we get into a nice, good, deep sleep. So again, balance is the key. Elimination of one whole macro group is not a great idea in the long term. Okay, the fifth one is this. This is a new one for me. People are recommending unripe fruit. I've never heard this before in my life, but now I am. People are recommending that you eat unripe fruit because some of them have resistant starch. 
So I've done a podcast on resistant starch. I'll try to link it up. There are benefits to resistant starch. It can feed good bacteria in your gut. Uh, it can help with higher levels of blood pressure or cholesterol, et cetera. However, you're doing that for a specific health reason. As fruit ripens, you are getting more of the hydration in the fruit. You are getting more of the vitamins, the minerals, the enzymes. The healthiest fruit in the world is picked ripe, not green. I saw someone the other day promoting green bananas as the healthiest form of bananas. That is, it's just outlandish. It's an outlandish idea to say that. And here's why they were doing it. But again, they weren't doing it to cause anyone harm. And I get it. They were doing it because they say, which is true, that it has the lowest glycemic response. So it will spike your blood sugar the least. Now, first of all, that's eating a banana by itself, right? That's when it's because the glycemic index is based on eating one food by itself, uh, devoid of anything else of the meal. Uh, the meal, yes, and 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 done on college meals. Uh, college, yes, meals like men. Uh, that's that was how the glycemic index was formed, and it is correct. Not saying that it's not. It's a little bit individualized for each person. However, this listen, bananas ripen on the tree, and you pick them when they are yellow. Now, if you eat a banana. At various stages, especially with those little brown spots before it becomes overly brown, but just the little brown spots, believe it or not, there are more antioxidants. There are, it's a little sweeter, so, but that, that is regardless of it. And it actually contains uh, the ability to increase natural killer cells in your body, which has been shown to help with certain types of cancer, et cetera. Now, I'm not making medical claims that bananas cure cancer. I'm not saying that. But you have to understand is that, again, as you peel back the onion, you go a little bit deeper into that knowledge base. So green bananas for everyone, most people get a stomach ache, right? Not ideal for most people. So again, just want to put that out there. Less nutrients. Yes, there's resistant starch. Yes, it's lower glycemic, but our whole world should not be based on low glycemic foods. Like that, <laughs> right now, it's like our whole world is based on how can you hack carbohydrates? And that's one of the worst ways to look at food. All right, the sixth one is this. Fasting for 20 to 23 hours a day with a one meal a day diet. Now, I'm not going to go too deep on this because I talked about it uh, yesterday on three things never to do while fasting. And I have a whole show on the one meal a day diet. I go through the pros and I go through the cons. I, tell, I talk to people why they may have uh, better digestion, why they may have a little bit more energy, why they may have better weight loss results. And then I share with you, though, all the long-term consequences of doing it. So definitely check that out again. It's, you have to be very careful as a health expert or someone on social media posting these things because you are getting results without looking at what made things look like in 10, 20 years from now. And if you don't mean for people to do it for 10 or 20 years, then tell people, hey, this is meant to do it for short term. And you want to run your thyroid hormones. You want to run this. You want to run that at the same time to make sure it's not hurting you in the long term. Again, I just want to, I want to be fair about this and not lead people in the wrong direction. Number seven is this. The last one is this. People showing their blood work online and saying, hey, look what I'm doing. My blood work looks fantastic. Okay. We have to be careful with that. Blood is a great thing to run every single year. And if something's off, good. Run it every six months. Okay. Not good, but like make sure that you're keeping up with it. Here's the thing. Blood is a homeostatic fluid. When I was 17 years old, my body was literally shutting down and dying. They couldn't figure out what it is. They saw white blood cells were way off. But once they found it wasn't cancer and it wasn't any of these other things, they had no idea what was wrong with my body. It was not until I started to run what we'll call subclinical or functional medicine lab testing that I figured out what all the underlying issues were that was causing my immune system to shut down, to become dysfunctional, for my glands to be swollen larger than golf balls in my neck, for me to have no energy, complete insomnia, all these massive issues my body was having, couldn't control even temperature in my body. My blood work was fine, except for those white blood cells. Here's the issue. When you started to run specialized lab testing, then I was able to figure out, oh, I have Addison's disease. I have rheumatoid arthritis. I have type 2 diabetes. I mean, my doctors never would have guessed I had any of these things because everything looked normal. 
right? But my body began to shut down, shut down, shut down, shut down. And they weren't going to keep running blood work because they're like, oh, we just ran your blood work three weeks ago or three months ago. So here's the thing. Even if your blood work is perfect, your blood is a homeostatic fluid, which means that it's going to look great until it doesn't, until you literally overflow the rain barrel and then it's off a cliff. Then triglycerides are high, cholesterol is high, CRP is high, homocysteine is high, sodium levels are high, calcium levels are high, showing the potassium levels are high, showing the body is in a massive state of inflammation and catabolism, right? So again, I enjoy and like running blood work, and you should, but you also want to say, what do my omega-3 to omega-6 levels look like, right? That, and that will help you understand omega-3s a little bit better. What do my food sensitivities look like? What do my hormones look like? What's my cortisol look like? What do my thyroid look like, right? These are all things that you can actually look at from a functional medicine perspective and understand where your body's at. So that is what I want to share with you today. Again, if you've seen a post like this, please don't tag me in it and come down on the person. Please don't do that. That's not what this industry is about. This industry is about building each other up. I learn from others. Others will hopefully learn from others as well. And what I want to do is if you are posting about health, you can say, hey, this has been my experience. Or you can start to teach things at a little bit deeper of a level and talk about bioindividuality as well. So the last thing I want to state is that Wherever your mind is at right now, always keep it open, right? Just always keep it open. If you feel that lectins are the worst thing in the world and these, these plant toxins that are out to get us and kill us, just read the other side of the equation. Okay, yeah, lectins can be detrimental to some people, but let's read the other side, right? Let's, let's talk about that. Even in that book, The Plant Paradox, which I review, if you get to the end of the book, they say, this is not necessarily meant to be forever. Once you fix your gut, you should be able to start to reintroduce these things and see if you're still sensitive. So again, I just, I never want to be the person that comes down on any other individual. I want to help build people up, but I also want to call these things out so that if you see them, don't tag me, don't come down on the person. You just know that there are levels to this. And as you begin to expand your mind and expand your knowledge, uh, you'll start to see these things as well. So thank you so much. I appreciate you. Always feel free to leave a comment on YouTube, on Instagram. I would love to hear from you. Again, thank you so much. And do feel free to share the show with anyone you believe it could serve. Thank you so much for tuning into today's show. And before you go, I want to make sure that you know we are back at Equal Life with one of our most popular offers ever. For the past three years, we try to bring you many of our favorite products that maybe if you've never tried them before, you can get your hands on them for the great price of free. This allows a lot of people to, as I said, try out a product that maybe they're on the fence about purchasing or they've heard a lot about and they want to try it out for themselves. Well, I can tell you that most nutritional supplements are a bit prophylactic in nature, meaning that they are helping you, but you're not necessarily feeling it on a daily basis. The goal is over time, you're getting the benefits. So you're getting the benefits of keeping all of your vitamins and minerals and nutrients high while being able to detoxify on a daily basis. However, there are a few products and activated B complex is one of them. When you take it, you actually feel the difference within hours to days maximum. And here's why many people are depleted depleted of their B vitamins. And B, vit B vitamins are essential for energy, for detoxification, for their brain, memory, cognition, or alleviating brain fog, and also helping to reduce stress. Plus, if you're not getting enough B complex vitamins in, you're not able to properly transform your carbohydrates into energy. So you may start to tend to gain more body weight, or you may not be able to process those carbohydrates as efficiently as energy for the mitochondria. So here's what I want you to do. Get your free bottle of activated B complex with all qualifying orders this week over at Ecolife. It is a full methylated B complex. That means you're getting the B vitamins in the proper way that the body was meant to absorb them. So you're getting the methylcobalamin, the methylfolate, you're getting paradoxal 5-phosphate. So we're giving you all of your B vitamins. Plus, we are also adding in other B complex family members, such as what's called PABA, 
and inositol, and even TMG trimethylglycine, which helps with inflammation in the arteries, methylation for detoxification, and so much more. Again, I could go on and on about this product. Head on over to Equal Life, learn more about it, and get your free bottle, which is a $30 value, completely free right now on all qualifying orders, and that includes international orders as well. Head to stephencabral.com forward slash Equal Life for your free bottle today.